other is Dominic from Batteries Included podcast, and I'm here with Nikhil Goel, Archer Aviation, and we are sitting in the midnight, an EVT, uh, how would you say? An EVTOL. EVTOL. It's a vertical takeoff and landing, electrically powered, of course. Um, so, so can we start with maybe a few questions? Uh, like, what was the impetus for the for this company to begin with? Well, really to change how people go from A to B in our cities all over the world. Our cities are getting increasingly congested, increasingly dirty. We wanted to build an all new form of transportation that would help people save hours a day in their daily commutes. All right. And this is your main product, right? This is our one and only product. Okay. Uh, so really brief. So you have a deep background in eVTOL, right? I understand. Yeah. So your personal history, I believe you were involved with uh, Uber Elevate? Yes, I helped start Uber Elevate. So when I was at Uber, I worked with the founder and the CEO of Uber to start our aviation division, Uber Elevate. I understand you're the author of a white paper that I've heard people talking about it just recently. That uh, yeah. has a lot of influence even today. Yeah, I hope so. You know, we, we were able to write the Uber Elevate white paper in tandem with Mark Moore, who invented this technology when he was at NASA for 32 years as well as Jeff Holden, Uber's former chief product officer at the time. Okay. So this Midnight, um, can you tell me just a bit about its abilities right now? So it's uh, how many passengers, uh, range? So Midnight can fly four passengers and a pilot in addition to some baggage. And the range is about 160 kilometers. 160 kilometers, what is that? 100 miles. 100 miles for our American audience. Yes. All right, and that has you have because it's a, a, an aircraft, you have to have some reserve as well, right? Yeah. So what's the, what would be the total? with reserves that can fly 100 miles? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and what's the configuration of the motors? So we've got 12 motors, six in the front, six in the back, the six in the front tilt. So all 12 of them are used for takeoff. Then the six in the front will tilt forward to allow forward flight on the wing. Nice. Um, and like you mentioned, it has wings, so this yeah. is a lot, lot different from the regular drones that just you know, fly up and down. And exactly. Distances. So, uh, can you explain the advantage of the wings? So the, there's many advantages of the wings. One is uh, it provides lift and forward flight, so you don't have to use the propellers to power that forward flight. Mm -hmm. Two is from a safety perspective, you can glide on those wings and land safely, even in the event of no electricity. Okay. And. Uh, so one of the big uh, obstacles, I guess, to having this kind of uh, craft in like an urban environment would be the noise profile. So how do you counter, how do you get around? The... Well, so our aircraft are 100 times quieter than helicopters. Okay. And what that does is it allows us to land seamlessly in urban environments without disrupting our neighbors. Okay. And how do we achieve, is that like the shape of the like each blade or is it something else? Uh, so it's the fact that instead of one large rotor like a helicopter, mm -hmm. We have a dozen rotors, okay. and those dozen fans spin um, are able to spin more slowly since they're much smaller. That allows us to have a much more quiet noise profile. Oh. Uh, so, technical details like, so the motors, how many uh, kind of uh, how many kilowatts do they put out? So, uh, I don't have the answer to that offhand. Okay. Yeah. Um, permanent magnet motors. Like so? <coughs> what was that? Per permanent mag magnet motors. Yeah, so the motors are doubly redundant. Okay. And so, um, and then within each of those motors, there's another double redundancy configuration as well. Okay. And batteries. Yeah. This is where batteries included podcast. Yep. Uh, what can you tell us about the pack? So they're lithium ion packs. There's six of them, three in each wings. Okay. <coughs> they're, um, each battery pack powers diagonally opposed motors. So if this battery were to go out here in the left wing, okay. uh, it would turn off this propeller in the front and the propeller on the other side on the back. That way you're able to always stay, you know, trimmed and in balance. Okay. Uh, they're lithium ion cells, very similar to what you would find inside of Tesla Model S. We chose cylindrical cells over pouch cells for their safety benefits, as well as the fact that you can get those cells today off the shelf. Right, so 2170 format. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, and <laughs> what, uh, what size of the packs about? Kilowatt hours, like 30 pieces. So, so? so you know, we, we aim for really high density packs. Right. Um, again, similar to what you get in the Model S, in excess of 200 watt hours per kilogram. Oh, From a density. Government density. Yeah. Uh, is that at, that's at the cell level, not the pack, pack level? At the pack level, pack 200 level. watt hours per kilogram? Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, 
So can you touch on uh, some of the key technologies within the craft? Like, I understand that you've chosen to use both with the off-the-shelf components rather than yeah. vertically integrate all that. That's what sort of we thing. think is our unique differentiator. Okay. Is we look our number one goal is to get to market as quickly as we can. Right. And to do that, uh, we are using the majority of our parts in our aircraft are already certified. So we're working with Garmin, Honeywell, Saffron, folks who have decades of certification heritage right. to make sure that our aircraft from day one is the easiest to certify and therefore launch in all of our launch markets. So certification is a big issue with, yeah. with the VTOL, right? So where are you at with the, uh, so there's different markets have different authorities, I guess. So yeah. in the States we have the FAA and the other markets have other authorities. So where are you at with those different certifications? So we're working with all the major certification authorities in the world. The FAA is taking the lead. Okay. So we're working very closely with the FAA. We have a phenomenal relationship with them. And then as we work with the FAA, in parallel, we're working with the GCA here in, in the Emirates. They're working with the DGCA in India, our other international launch market. Okay. So uh, how far do you think you are from launch in, in if, what's your first market actually? Our goal would be to launch as soon as next year, uh, towards the end of the next year, okay. in both New York City as well as uh, Abu Dhabi. Wow. And I, I believe you had uh, some big news yesterday. That's about right. About that? So yesterday we announced a, a pretty phenomenal framework agreement with Adio, the Abu Dhabi Investment Office. Okay. That agreement provides hundreds of millions of dollars to help accelerate our operations here in the UAE. So vertiports, operations, in-country final assembly, and a number of the other factors that'll go into making sure we're successful here. Wow, that's amazing. That's, yeah. that's great to have that sort of partnership. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, so speaking of manufacturing, where do you intend to manufacture? So um, right now, our manufacturing partner is Stellantis. Stellantis is the third largest automaker in the world. Right. Uh, the owner of Jeep, Ram, Maserati, a number of other brands. Mm -hmm. Stellantis is building our factory in Covington, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. That factory will be online later this year. Okay. First phase of that will produce 650 aircraft, and over time, we have the opportunity to grow to produce 2,000 aircraft per year. That's a lot of craft. Yeah. Wow. So, Co Covington, Georgia? Covington, Georgia. Co Covington. Uh, what part of the state is that? I'm, ju I'm it's just in right near North Atlanta. Florida. So, okay. So, this is like yeah. just outside of Atlanta. Nice. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of. Uh, a lot more technology than you expect in, in the South. Yeah. You're a Silicon Valley company, though, right? That's right. We're, we're headquartered in Silicon Valley. All right. Um, so besides besides Stellantis, do you have any other partnerships? We do. So United Airlines has bought up to $1.5 billion of our aircraft. Okay. Boeing is both an investor and a partner of ours, uh, and then a number of others. We've got the largest U.S. Air Force contract in the entire sector. Uh, we're working hand in hand here in the UAE with folks like Falcon Aviation, Air Chateau, and a number of others. And in India, we're partners with Interglobe, the owner of Indigo Airlines. Indigo is the sixth largest airline in the world, the majority um, airline in India with over 63% market share. Okay. We're very proud of our partners, and with them, we're going to be able to get to scale quickly, safely, and efficiently. It was a very impressive craft, I have to say. It, it showed you. up this morning and then I walked in and just kind of blew, took, blew me away. It's Thank like, you. It's pretty amazing. You put a lot craft. of effort into it. Right. Uh, so just to wrap up really quickly, is there anything else you'd like to you know say to our American audience? Uh, you know. Yeah. Anything? Well, really, it's the powertrain that makes this all possible. Right. You know, it's what folks at Tesla and Apple have been accomplishing over the last decade. All of our powertrain team comes from either Tesla or Apple. We brought a lot of technology and learnings from that. And uh, those individuals are really leading the way in making sure that we can fly safely and efficiently. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll be flying together at some point. Good. All right. Great. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you.